We have very little time. You have no idea what's coming. We may know a little bit. But however much we know, it is the tip of the iceberg. And just about everything we really think we know, it's not right. Some of it surely is, but uh, we don't know what is right and what is wrong. How could we? Even when we have a life experience, how do we know what really happened when our eyes can be tricked so easily? Optical illusions that you see like on the internet, they're great examples, but this, this happens every day in everything you do. When you open your eyes and look around, The things you see are what you expect to see. Things out of place you might not even notice. Or they might stand out and get your attention right away. Depending on your expectations and your point of view. See, everybody's reality is quite different from each other's. And you can see examples of this with um, time dilation and stuff like that. And there that space and time and objects inside space and time were the fundamental nature of reality. And we could build a comprehensive theory of reality on that foundation where space time itself was in some sense the fundamental entity. And particles and objects are elements within space time. But physicists have realized that their own theories, namely Einstein's theory of gravity, together with quantum field theory, those fundamental pillars of physics dictate that, that space-time has no operational meaning beyond what's called the Planck scale, about 10 to the minus 33 centimeters, roughly, 10 to the minus 43 or 44 seconds, roughly. It, it, it's not that there are pixels of space-time, it's that space-time ceases to have any operational meaning. It, it becomes meaningless. And there's nothing, you know, experimental that you could that you could do that would have any meaning at that level. There are some really good videos and examples of like a, a train going down a track, and it's got clear sides where you can see, and someone is bouncing a ball straight up and down. And let's say the person on the outside of the track that's not on the train is bouncing their ball straight up and down as well. Now, as the train moves past, the ball that you see on the train going up and down, it's not really going up and down. It's going at an angle, the direction that the train's going. And the guy on the on the sideline there, bouncing it, it is going up straight up and down. Each are having the exact same experience. Their ball is going straight up and down. But as an observer on the side, you can obviously see the ball in the train takes a longer path and therefore more time and distance to travel those those V shapes, those angles, as the ball is bounced up and down. And it's a really good example of time dilation where both people are having the exact same experience, but from your point of view, they're obviously different. And this can be <clears throat> translated in all of our life. Everything we do has that effect it's all in your point of view literally and not only physical things like your sight but mentally as well the the biases you form all through life 
are the foundations of what you actually experience and see in life. So, we really don't know what we think we know. Everything that we think we know, or almost everything, is something somebody has told us, or something that we've seen on TV, or read in a book, or seen on the internet. And like I said, even when we have these life experiences, our mind is so easily fooled. Our senses are so easily tricked that you can't rely on anything. So the point is, is don't get these opinions that you're right and everybody else is wrong and stick to them. It's all right to hold that opinion, but when you see evidence, and you should be willing to accept evidence that you're wrong, well, modify your stance. You know, this old saying about people that are, you know, stick to their guns or whatever, that, that's not helpful. That's not good. No, you should always be willing to to flow with the new knowledges that come in. And if you take a position and you never change that position, you you have to be wrong because the chances that you got the precisely correct information the first time around is so low. Uh, you know, I say things like, you know, you should do this, you should do that. Well, do whatever you want to do, for sure, and be your own person. But it's been, it's my experience that we know so much less than we think we know. And it's, <clears throat> it's really apparent when you when you watch politicians and even our science and things like that where we do these ridiculous things thinking we're smart you know like at one point we put grass carps in the lakes to try to eat the grass down the weeds in the lakes to make them pretty well the grass carp took over and they were invasive species, and then the, the the native fish couldn't breed. And we do, it, that's just one example. We've done that throughout our history, trying to, trying to modify nature when we don't know what in the world we're doing. We think we do. Boy, do we think we do. We think we are smart. We named ourselves Homo sapiens sapiens. The wise, wise ones. <laughs> oh, lordy, lordy. People, people, people. Well, that'll do it for this moment. I'm going to put several of these kind of things together on this video. Hey, well, thanks for watching. There's going to be more on this one. Stay tuned. All right, so... I don't want to sound negative when I say, you know, the things that we know, we don't know. <laughs> Actually, that's knowing quite a bit. I know this sounds like I'm talking in circles, but literally, when you realize how little we know, it is very enlightening. And... It, <clears throat> how can I say this? Every time we learn something, we don't reduce the amount of things that, that we could learn. We increase the amount of things that could be learned. And it's a can of worms. When you realize, when you obtain knowledge about something, anything, it opens a can of worms in all different directions. New questions, 
new things to ask, new things to look into. So when I say we, we don't really know much, it's because of the immense amount of things there is to know. So I wanted to clarify that.